So we are going to start with the definition of chronic pain versus chronic fatigue. The traditional definition of pain itself is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience. Um, it's a protective mechanism that your body uses to alert you of changes or potential dangers in your environment. No two people perceive pain the same way, and pain does not always equal tissue damage. Chronic pain occurs when symptoms experienced are more than what would be expected from the initial injury or incident. And this is an indication of nervous system hypersensitivity. The traditional definition of fatigue is the feeling of exhaustion or lack of energy, which may or may not be in response to activity. Fatigue after a mentally or physically demanding task is normal. However, persistent fatigue or fatigue, fatigue that does not improve with rest may be abnormal. Chronic fatigue can affect all aspects of daily life and often chronic pain and fatigue can overlap with each other. Chronic pain and fatigue may not always be diagnosed, but they can accompany other diagnosed conditions such as fibromyalgia, amplified pain syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, or cancer. But just because you have one of these diagnosed conditions does not mean that you will have chronic pain or chronic fatigue. And on the other hand, just because you have chronic pain or fatigue does not necessarily mean that you have one of these other conditions they can sometimes occur without any underlying comorbidities or causes. It is important that if you experience any of these symptoms um, that you can talk to your doctor for future testing if necessary. Okay, so if we look a little deeper into chronic pain itself, um, because there's a lot of people who have pain all the time or have pain every day. So how do we know that it's chronic pain? So kind of like Ms. Michaela said earlier, um, chronic pain outlasts what's considered normal for an injury. So there's a difference between like acute pain and chronic pain. So acute pain, if you think about somebody who sprains their ankle or something, you know, that's normal for it to hurt after you would expect that. Um, same thing if somebody breaks a bone, that's normal. You know, you would expect things to hurt. So it's not necessarily quantified by a timeline either. So somebody who has a paper cut, you know, that's going to heal a lot faster than somebody who does break a bone or who injures a disc in their back or something like that. So it's not, some people, you know, would say chronic pain would be three months, six months, a year, um, but we don't really go by that. We just say whatever that normal healing period would be, if your pain is outlasting that, that's when we would consider it chronic. So when we say that the nervous system becomes really, really sensitive. So they're hyper, it's a hypersensitized system um, to some certain specific stimuli. So I'm going to go over that a lot on the next slide because that's a little bit complicated and complex. Um, but basically, chronic pain, it's living with it as possible. That's kind of the overall arching point here. So even though this pain may be going on a lot longer than we would expect it to, um, there's a lot of people who live with that, but it can be managed. So lifestyle modifications, you know, getting a healthy diet, daily exercise, medication, and just having a really good healthcare team um, that's able to help you through it. It's totally possible to live with this pain. Thank you. Okay, so this drawing is a little complicated, so bear with me here, but it's a good way to kind of explain chronic pain. So in order to understand chronic pain, you, we kind of have to know what pain is first and why pain exists. So basically the way, the whole reason that pain exists in the first place is to tell us that something is going on in your body. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. People always associate pain with danger or something bad, but, you know, if you think about putting your hand on a hot stove or something, we want that to hurt. You want there to be pain because you don't want to totally, you know, burn your hand and damage your whole body. Um, same thing, you know, if you were to run over your foot, you want that to hurt so that if there's something broken in there, you can go get it checked out and get it fixed. So pain is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just our body's way of alerting us and telling us that something is going on. So the whole, the reason we feel pain is because of our nervous system. That's what allows us to feel pain. So I'm gonna use the mouse here, if you guys can see this and kind of explain this analogy here. So your body is made up, you have a crazy huge nervous system that goes all over your whole entire body. So there's 45 miles of nerves in there if you were to lay them all out side by side. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of nerve sensors in your whole entire body. 
So they all exist in order to protect you. You know, so I always compare it to like a home security system on a house. This is like the best analogy I have for this. So if you, let's say you have a house, right? And somebody breaks into your house while you're gone. So they, they damage that house. They damage what's going on and they get inside. You know, what happens? Your alarm goes off, right? Your alarm goes off like crazy and you, the cops show up, you come home and you try to figure out what's going on. So when that happens, you address the situation, you figure out what's, what's broken, what's damaged, what's happening, and we fix it. You get, you know, get the person out of your house, put your window back together, whatever you need to do. And over time, then you can turn that alarm system off. And, you know, a couple of days later, everything is back to normal. So that's kind of like how a normal house security system would work. So the same thing works in your body. So this little dotted or um, jagged line down here is representing this electrical activity that's running through your nerves all the time. So that just means that you're alive and you're breathing. Okay, that's a good thing. So when that system is just kind of buzzing along like normal like this, let's use an example of like stepping on a nail because everybody has stepped on something sharp before. So when that happens, when you step on a nail, how do you know that you did it? Right, because you don't have eyes down in the bottom of your foot. Something has to tell you that you stepped on it. So that's where that nervous system comes into play. So those nerves down in your foot, they send a signal up into your brain that says, hey, you stepped on something. Okay, well, we step on, you know, the carpet all the time every day, and that's, that's not harmful. That's not dangerous. So no alarm system goes off when that happens. That's just a normal day-to-day -day thing. But when you step on a nail, right, your brain looks down and says, oh, that's bad. That's something that's damaging or dangerous to your body. So when that happens, that alarm signal activates. So you get this message, we go past this dotted line up here, this threshold, you know, and we get that pain signal so that we know something's going on. So anybody who's stepped on a nail before, you know when you take it out of your foot, it doesn't just immediately go away. It's sore, it's achy, and it's throbby, sometimes like for even a couple of days, because your body wants to make sure that threat is totally gone. So that there's no, you know, you don't have an infection, you don't have part of the nail stuck in your foot, anything like that. But a couple of days later, right, everything's fine. You don't even, you kind of forgot that you even did it. So again, that's kind of our normal system. So bear with me. We're going to flip back to the house exam or house example here. So a lot of people now have a ring doorbell on their house, um, which if you're not familiar with that, basically it's like a little like alarm video camera that sits on your front door and it catches motion. So it records things that come up to your house. So now, you know, when your mailman comes to drop your mail off, you get a little alert sent to your phone that, hey, there's something going on. You know, if a squirrel runs across your porch, you get a little alert and a little signal or something going on. You know, your Amazon guy brings a package up, you get another alert. So now your alarm system on your house is really, really, really sensitive. And it's not just responding anytime there's like a dangerous situation, right? The Amazon guy's not trying to break into your house. You know, the squirrel's not trying to break in, but you're getting all of these alerts and all of these little alarm signals going off all the time. So that system, it's now super sensitive. So now it's alerting you of stuff all the time, but none of that's dangerous or harmful. So your body can work very much the same way. So we're gonna go back to the lines here. So sometimes instead of coming all the way back down to normal here, people's alarm systems rest up here at this top line where this kind of blue line is at. So when that happens, you know, now that system is really, really sensitive. So now sometimes, you know, you just, you move a little bit and you have pain, you know, you do something, you carry in a bag of groceries and you have pain. So that system is super sensitive and it's no longer telling you when there's actually something dangerous going on or something that's physically damaging to your body. It's just sending you all kinds of signals. It's kind of getting those signals all mixed up. So even though you're getting pain all the time and you're having pain all the time, it's not necessarily that those tissues are damaged anymore. So that system is sensitive. So we're, I'm gonna to skip to the next slide here and explain it just a little further too. So, and I know this one's a little bit blurry, but this is another good picture here. So if we look at this line down here, this before pain line, so the pain and fatigue can kind of be used interchangeably here too, you know, before pain or fatigue, you have a lot of room for activities. So these activities can include, you know, let's say like vacuuming your house, for an example. So before, you know, sure, you would get some stimulation to your system, but maybe you'd only get up to here after you vacuum your house and then it comes back down or carrying in all the groceries from your car. You know, you can make two or three trips, but we never cross that dotted line up there and things come back down. 
you know, before you could do your hour long exercise class and it would come back down. So we never crossed that dotted line up at the top there. We never had that pain experience associated with it. Well, if you are resting up here, if you have one of these really, really sensitive systems, now, you know, let's say instead you vacuum maybe one room in your house and now we've passed that line and now you have pain with that. You know, and before you could carry in all the groceries, well, now you make one trip and we've passed that dotted line and now you have pain or fatigue as well. You know, maybe you're really, really fatigued after doing that. Um, you know, your exercise class, you could do your whole hour long class before. Now, maybe actually after 15 minutes, you either you're hurting or you're really fatigued, really tired. So your activities themselves didn't necessarily change. You're doing the same things you were doing before, but your system is really, really sensitive now. So instead of being able to do all of those things and not have any consequences from it the next day, you know, now the next day you're hurting or the next day you're really, really tired and exhausted. So our goal with this, our treatment approach, because again, this it's possible to fix this. It's possible to work with this. We're going to try and get this line to come back down to this line to get it to a more normal. So we're trying to address the whole entire nervous system. So kind of retrain your system, your nerves, your brain, all of those things involved in that of how to come back down from that sensitivity level so that your body is no longer associating all of these things with pain and fatigue when it's something that really isn't harming any of your body's tissues. So it's complicated, but it's really, really interesting. And it's possible. That's kind of the overarching point with this is it's possible to make it better. So we're going to look a little bit deeper into chronic fatigue now. Like we mentioned earlier, chronic fatigue is an overpowering lack of energy that can affect all aspects of your daily life. It can be unrelenting and unchanged depending on rest or modification of activity and it can lead to difficulty initiating or maintaining your normal activities. Often it can be a vicious cycle. So for example, on days where your fatigue is worsened, you cancel all of your commitments, you fall behind on some household chores and you spend the day resting on the couch. After a day or two of rest, you begin to feel better and you have more energy. And now you try to make up for the days where you weren't able to get as much done. So you run all of your errands, you finish your chores, and you even get a workout in. But unfortunately, this can lead to a crash from overdoing it and lead to increased levels of pain and fatigue. And you have to spend the next few days resting again. Um, so it is really tough when you have that, that cycle like that. It's hard to break. Um, but the good news is, is that it is manageable. Um, so here is a visual of that cycle that I was just describing. Um, the goal is that eventually you're hovering closer to that straight blue line right here and avoiding the extremes of either overdoing it or underdoing it. Um, which can be achieved through things like activity modification and pacing maybe keeping an activity or an exercise log and the consistency of low impact and low intensity exercise. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into these treatments and management strategies in a minute. Um, and we'll expand further on it in part two of this presentation in a couple of weeks. So make sure that you tune in for that as well. Okay. Um, so a lot of people, if you have experienced this before, of course, you're asking, you know, why is this happening to me? It's really frustrating to live with chronic pain or chronic fatigue every day. Um, but one thing we want you to know, it's a lot more common than you think it is. So this, there's statistics that show that one in four people have some kind of this, some kind of form of chronic pain and or chronic fatigue. Um, so that's 25% of people. That's a really, really big number. And that was kind of a crazy number when I heard that for the first time. So you're not alone. There's a lot of people who deal with this every day. And again, that's a good thing because then we know there's something that we can do to help it as well. Um, so that being said, though, there are a lot of different psychosocial factors that can maybe make you more susceptible to ongoing pain and fatigue. Um, so past medical history can be one, you know, are you immunocompromised? Have you been through some other kind of illness before that has kind of made your body weaker? That can be a reason that maybe you're more susceptible. Pre-existing comorbidities, you know, hypertension, diabetes, um, your family history, all of those things could make you more sensitive to this. Your diet, so either not getting all of the nutrients that you need, not eating enough, or on the opposite, you know, eating just only unhealthy food, never giving your body what it needs can make you more susceptible. 
your lifestyle. So, you know, are you working at a desk all day or versus are you on your feet all day? And then your activity level as well. You know, even if you're, you know, sedentary at work, are you do exercise afterwards or, you know, are your hobbies more something like reading or watching TV, you know, where you don't get up and you don't move around at all. Uh, sleep is another big one, not getting enough sleep that you need. And then even stress level can be a really big one too. People who have a much higher level of stress are more susceptible to this ongoing pain and fatigue as well. So most of these things are things that we can change. So we may not be able to change your medical history or your comorbidities, you know, but we can, we can change your diet, your lifestyle, you know, your sleep schedule, your stress level. There's a lot of things that we can work on um, to make this better and kind of work on managing that chronic pain and fatigue. Okay, so this, this is a really, really brief. We're gonna go over this a lot more when we do our second part of this presentation, but we kind of wanted to give you guys at least a few examples of management for these. Um, so the first one, the one important one is having a really good healthcare team that's willing to help you. So, you know, this is your primary care doctor, any other kind of specialist, you know, pain management doctor, physical therapy, occupational therapy. There's so many people involved in this healthcare team. Um, and usually we need all those people because, you know, this is really complex stuff. It's not easy. So we need a team approach in order to manage it as well. Um, diet is another big one. So getting a, you know, a healthy diet, the nutrients that you need, you know, not eating too much, not eating too little, um, sometimes meeting with a nutritionist, you know, or some other kind of health coach that can help you work through and figure out what you need to make your diet better. Exercise is a huge one. Um, so being able to exercise, but also exercise safely. So again, that's where, you know, physical and occupational therapy can come in. Sometimes a personal trainer is a really good thing, like figuring out where, what ways you can exercise safely that are going to help you feel better, you know, not make you feel worse the next day. Activity modification is a really, really big one as well. So especially with um, the chronic fatigue, you know, if you're really exhausted and you're really tired, maybe you try exercising. Maybe you need that little boost of energy that exercise can give you. So, you know, try it for five or 10 minutes. And if you feel really good, then we know that's what you needed. And if you're like, no, oh, this isn't working, then take a break. You know, maybe your body needs to rest. So a lot of it is about kind of listening to your body and figuring out what it needs based on how you feel too. Um, uh, along with that too comes energy conservation. So, you know, if you're a morning person, if you feel great in the morning, then maybe you schedule some of your more strenuous things in the morning. Maybe that's when you do some of your shopping or some of your housework. And if you're the opposite, you feel horrible in the morning and you love the afternoon, then you space those things out in the afternoon. So you have to be smart about what you're doing too. Um, and ask for help if you need help. You know, maybe you can get somebody to run some errands for you if you know that it's just a bad, a low energy day or a bad pain day and you're not gonna make it out. Um, Along with that as well, you know, are there activities that you can do to save yourself some energy? So if you're trying to do all your laundry, can you sit and do it instead of standing? Or if you need to do a lot of cooking that day, you know, can you bring a chair into the kitchen and sit in between stuff rather than trying to stand? Um, you know, shower chair, like can you sit in the shower and save yourself some energy that way? So there's a lot of modifications that you can do to help manage this as well. Um, medication is also a huge one. So there's a lot of different medications that can be tried that can help. That's where your doctor comes into play too. Sleep hygiene is another really big one. So getting enough sleep at night um, and trying to get good sleep. So, you know, there's all of the things that seem self-explanatory, but even just trying things like limiting your screen time before you go to bed, um, limiting your water intake before you go to bed, you know, setting a bedtime and awake time, you know, trying to kind of calm your mind or do some meditation before you go to bed. All of those things can help you get good sleep that are going to help you feel better as well different modalities, you know, use of, there's ice, there's heat, there's TENS units, there's a lot of other things that we can do to help as well. And then social support is a huge one. So you have to have, you have to have a good team. You've got to have people supporting you because this stuff, it's not fun. It's hard. So you've got to have people on your side and people who are able to support you through all of this as well. So friends, family, doctors, you know, healthcare professionals, social workers, whatever we need to, to help with our support team. Okay. So our overarching point with all this too is listen to your body. So good days and bad days are normal. Nobody's going to have 100% good days and that's okay. So we need to know how to manage our bad days and know how to do well on our good days. So when it comes to a really, really good day, we don't want to overdo it. You don't want to just go out and try to do everything that you possibly can on that day because we're going to crash and burn like Michaela was explaining earlier. Uh, but then on the opposite end too, don't do nothing on your bad days. You still need to be able to move on your bad days in order to get some blood flow through your body, you know, to get some oxygen through your body. There's all kinds of benefits that come from doing something even when you don't feel good. 
Um, don't be afraid to delegate tasks and ask, make modifications. And it's okay to ask for help. That's what people are there for. You know, it's okay to be able to kind of take charge of your health and ask for help when you need it. So again, you don't want to ignore your symptoms. We're not trying to just say it's not happening, but we also don't want to let those symptoms totally take over and take control of your life. So we don't want to learn. We always tell people you need to learn how to acknowledge your symptoms. You know, what is it your body trying to tell you and how can you listen to it both on your good days and on your bad days? Okay, we have a short activity now. Um, so we are going to do a breathing exercise called box breathing, and I invite you to participate if you'd like. You can find a comfortable position, either seated or laying down. You can let your eyes gently fall shut. Maybe rest one hand over your heart and one hand over your belly. So we'll begin by slowly breathing in through your nose over the count of four seconds. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to hold here at the top for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Slowly breathe out through your mouth to the count of four. Feeling the air exit your lungs. And now we'll hold here at the bottom for four seconds. Okay, we're gonna go through that again. So breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four, and hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out through your mouth. One, two, three, four, and hold your breath at the bottom. One, two, three, four. Again, in through your nose. One, two, three, four. Hold at the top. One, two, three, four. Breathe out through your mouth. One, two, three, four, and hold for one, two, three, four. We're going to do that one more time. Breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four, and hold for one, two, three, four. Out through your mouth. One, two, three, four and hold for one, two, three, and four. Okay, so like I said, that activity is called box breathing. Um, I like to complete it in a series of four. So if you kind of follow the shape of a box, you're breathing in, you're holding, you're breathing out, and you're holding. And we can repeat it four times, um, but it's a great technique that can be used to help lower your blood pressure and your heart rate which in turn helps to desensitize your nervous system and can help to reduce anxiety and stress and um, helps to improve insomnia. It can also help to balance your oxygen levels and the carbon dioxide levels in your bloodstream, which can improve your physical energy and your immune system function. So this can be done several times throughout the day, like I said, seated, laying down, eyes open, eyes closed, um, but it can be used to kind of help press the reset button and it's an effective tool in helping to manage chronic pain and chronic fatigue. So give this a try throughout your day. We'll open it up to any questions now. You can type them in the chat box if you have any. Well, hey, ladies, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much for um, coming on and talking about um, this subject. I think it's really important for a lot of our, our viewers. And, um, you know, I thought it was interesting while they're, if we're waiting on any questions, I did think it was really interesting that one in four people have chronic pain and chronic fatigue. Um, that's that's kind of a lot, uh, 25%. Um, I, I hadn't looked at those statistics and that's actually um, kind of, you know, mind blowing in that sense. Just so many people are 
you know, have some sort of uh, symptom of chronic pain or chronic fatigue. So um, thank you guys for sharing some of that stuff. Absolutely. Well, we might so, be waiting for another question here. I'll share our contact information and some resources. Yeah, and this will be, I know it's not going to be up here for long, but when Jacqueline shares the video, um, these will be on there as well. So one of our favorite resources is Adrian Lowe. Um, he has a website called whyyouhurt.com. So he is, he's a physical therapist. He works a lot with chronic pain. Um, he is a phenomenal resource. He has a lot of free videos posted on his websites um, that explain a lot about, he goes more into the pain side than the fatigue side, but he has a lot of pain videos um, explaining, you know, why you hurt, what we can do about it. He's just a really, really, really good resource if you want to learn a little more about chronic pain. Another one of the videos on here we have is called Pain Explained in Five Minutes. Um, again, it's it's easy. It's something that breaks it down. It's just five minutes to watch, and it kind of goes into a little bit more explanation about what we talked about today. So that's a really good resource if anyone's interested in it. And then we have a little video, too, explaining fatigue as well. So same thing, just breaks it down and kind of gives a little bit more um, about what's going on. And if you think that, you know, any of these are apply to you or this is something you're really concerned about, you know, we encourage you to reach out to a doctor, reach out to somebody on your healthcare team, because um, we've gone over just a, even a little bit today. There are a lot of things that we can do. So if there's somebody you want to get in touch with or if you have more questions, um, reach out to somebody. And then I think we have our contact info on here. Yeah, as well. So Michaela and I's emails are both on there. You're more than welcome to reach out to us. Um, we both work here at the hospital in outpatient physical therapy and sports medicine. And then Jacqueline's contact info is on there as well. So you are, you're welcome to contact any of us if you guys have further questions or you want something explained a little bit more. Thank you, Britta. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for uh, joining us today um, or hopping on this uh, webinar with us. Um, the link to this video will be sent to your emails that you provided upon registration. And... Um, you're welcome to also visit our website. It's at nkch.org under classes and events, uh, just to stay updated on the latest. So again, uh, thank you, Britta. Thank you, Michaela. You're welcome. And, um, and we'll see you guys in the next class. Yes, part two will be Monday, April 22nd at two o'clock. We're gonna get a little bit more into the treatment and management of chronic pain and fatigue. So join us for that. Yep, that's great. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.